Hi class, we are going to discuss for this session the hemodynamic disorders and I'm going to divide it into two parts. So this is the first part. Included in this discussion would be the following slides. We have slide 41, pulmonary edema. Slide 61, passive congestion of the spleen. 21, that's thrombosis old and new. 138, pulmonary embolism. 49, thrombus new. Okay, so okay, so as you can see, we're going to view the slide first in its entirety, so that you would be able to uh, appreciate the different areas of the slide. So this slide is uh, forty-one pulmonary edema, and this is coming from the lung. So these are the alveolar spaces. And you can see that there are small spaces uh, there, okay, that are rounded. Those are um, alveolar spaces. Okay, so now we go to the, this would be the better area because of the color. So what do we know about uh, pulmonary edema? So pulmonary edema is uh, associated with an increase in the hydrostatic pressure and that is due to an impairment in the venous return that is brought about by, by a left-sided heart failure. So this would cause congestion, impairment of the venous return and increased hydrostatic pressure. Uh, for you to be able to appreciate it better, you see these spaces, okay? This would be the alveolar spaces and then this uh, thin structures. Okay? These are the alveolar walls or the interstitium, okay? Within the alveolar spaces, you can see the presence of fibrin, which is colored pink. Okay, so you have this pink color. These are hemosiderin laden macrophages, hemosiderophages, but in this case, not only would be the hemosiderin be present in the macrophage, but also the anthracotic pigments. So the brown would represent the hemosiderin, the black would represent the carbon. So you look at the other areas, you can see the presence of the fibrin, and then you have the histiocytes. Those are histiocytes, okay? So now let's go to slide 61, which is labeled as passive congestion of the spleen. So what do you remember about the spleen in, during our histology sections? So the spleen, uh, would be divided into two regions. We have the white pulp and the red pulp. So in this particular uh, area, in this particular uh, image, you can see the presence of the white pulp, which is identified by the presence of a dark blue color. And that is due to the presence of lymphocytes. Okay, there. So this is due largely to the presence of lymphocytes. There. Okay. So those are the lymphocytes. And we would also take note of the presence of this blood vessel, which we would call as the central artery. Okay. And then the other region for the spleen would be this red area, which we would call us the red pulp, okay? So what happens with passive congestion of the spleen? So there would be a diminution in the size of the white pulp and an increase in the size of the red pulp. And this is attributed to the congestion and dilation of the sinusoids that are present within the red pulp. You can see that the red pulp would be filled with these red blood cells, okay? These are all red blood cells. And 
uh, you have the presence of the lymph, those lymphocytes and histocytes in the background. What is the most common cause for congestion of the spleen? Uh, it is liver cirrhosis. And then we also have the right-sided heart failure. Okay. Again, this is chronic passive congestion of the spleen. Slide 61. Next, we have slide 138. So we are still with congestion, but this time, this is lung tissue. Okay. So here you would, okay, let's go over with the area of the slide so that you would be able to appreciate it. Okay. So notice that we have a lot of those spaces. Those are the alveolar spaces surrounded by the interstitium or the alveolar walls. And notice that there are dark brown structures present in this particular magnification. So what do you think are they? Okay. So in this particular slide, you do not recognize much the presence of those pink amorphous deposits, which would be the fibrin. But what you would see here or appreciate would be the presence of these round structures. What are they? Uh, they are the so-called hemosiderin laden macrophages or hemosiderophages, uh, which would uh, have phagocytosed the hemosiderin pigments present. So when you have hemosiderin pigments, it's a sign of bleeding, okay? Or in this case, it's congestion. And this is attributed similar to the pulmonary edema that we have discussed, that's slide 41. And this is associated with the left-sided heart failure, okay? So these are what you call as, if there are numerous like this. So if you're going to go around the slide, they are numerous, and these are what we call as the heart failure cells. Okay. Next, we go to slide um, slide uh, twenty one. Okay. So slide twenty one is thrombosis old and new. Okay, so actually there are three tissues in this particular slide. This is slide, tissue number one, okay. This is a blood vessel, okay. And then we have tissue number two, which is another blood vessel. And then we have tissue number three, which is another blood vessel, okay. So the similarity between them is that they would possess occlusion of the lumen, okay? Here you can see occlusion of the lumen of the blood vessel. So let's start with this one, the first one. This is a new thrombus, okay? So when you say a thrombus formation, this is associated with ab abnormalities that we would see in the lumen of the artery. So what are they? If there's sign of endothelial injury, number two, if there's uh, turbulence or abnormal blood flow, and lastly would be the presence of hypercoagulability. So those three abnormalities should be present, and this is the, those three abnormalities are what we call as the virtuous triad. Okay. So how do you appreciate, or what are the things that you should be able to see? when you are confronted with a, a thrombus, with a new thrombus and an old thrombus. So first of all, this thrombus formation has completely obliterated the lumen. And what is, uh, what is very uh, prominent here would be the change in the color, okay? So in this particular area, you have a red portion, a darker red portion, and then you have the red portion or a lighter red portion. Lighter red, darker red, lighter red. Okay. So those are lam laminations of fibrin and red blood cells. Okay. So you have here the red blood cells, the fibrin, the red, uh, the fib 
fibrin, red blood cells, fibrin. And this is what we call as the lines of Zan. Okay. What are the other things that you would be able to appreciate in, uh, in a thrombus? Okay. So you would be able to appreciate this small spaces okay, there. They have the distinct appearance of being like needle shape or slit shape. Okay. These are uh, cholesterol clefts, C-L-E-F-T-S. So it means that they contain lipid. Okay. So this the uh, these structures would contain lipid. Okay. Um, in addition to that, so here you would see the presence of those cholesterol clefts. Okay. So those are structures that you would see in the uh, in the thrombus. Okay. Next, we go to the other two. Oh, aside from that, uh, you would able to notice the presence of this uh, areas found within the tunica media of the artery. Okay. So actually these are calcifications there. So these are calcifications that is seen with aging. And these are, these are what we call as the Monkeberg's okay, sclerosis or calcific medial Medial calcific sclerosis. Okay, now we go to the other uh, other tissue structure. So this is uh, still a blood vessel, but notice there's partial obliteration or occlusion of the of the lumen, and this would be the thrombus formation. Okay, the other one is new thrombus. This one is an old thrombus. And when you have an old thrombus, it means that there's organization. So when you say organization, it means that you would be able to see the presence of this blood vessel. Uh, there's uh, the presence of new collaterals there, the presence of a new vessel formation. But still, you would be able to appreciate the presence of those fibrin. Okay. Although the red blood cells here are not present anymore, okay, to be able to tell you that you have the lines of Zan. And also prominent in this particular area would be the Monkeberg sclerosis there, which is situated in the tunica media. Okay. okay, and then on the other area, we go to the other tissue. This would be the other tissue, which is still a blood vessel that is part uh, that has a partially occluded lumen. This one would show the lines of Zan. There, you can see the lines of Zan. You have the laminations, which is composed of fibrin, red blood cells, and fibrin. There. Fibrin, red blood cells, fibrin. And then you would see the presence of uh, collaterals. So, which is an indication that it's an old thrombus. Okay, in this particular area, you would see the presence of spaces. And what do you think would be? present in them, lipid, okay? So lipid would be present in these areas, okay? So remember the cholesterol clefts. So those are filled with lipid or cholesterol, okay? So that is old and new thrombus. Okay, and then our last uh, slide for this session would be the new thrombus okay so we have tackled the old and new thrombus this would be the new thrombus this is a blood vessel there so that's the that's the lining 
Okay? And then found within the lumen is a thrombus. Okay, very prominent here would be the presence of the lines of sun, alternating patterns of those red blood cells. Okay, so those are red blood cells. Let's look into the higher magnification there. Okay, you can see those are red blood cells. And then we have the fibrin over here. Okay, and then red blood cells again. Okay, so those are what they call as the lines of Zan. So it's indicative of a new thrombus. Okay, so those are the slides that we have for this session. So we are so kindly uh, continue with your reading and we are going to uh, do another recording on uh, the part two. Okay, so thank you and good day.